All right, what is up, Marines? Inexorable Warrior here, and today we are back with the second installment for the Ultimate Guide for Aliens Fire Team Elite. Before we begin, let's have a quick recap, shall we? The things that we talked about in the previous video were my credibility, who I am, 1900 hours in the game, and we content index of the series roles what do they actually offer to a afe just another brain dead shooter it's a very simple game shoot to kill yes. major differences on higher versus lower difficulties shoot you without grappling you when you're downed by the my pro tip number one watch the radar i cannot emphasize this enough pro tip number two target prioritization for the time in presence of specials not elites but specials. pro tip number 2.1 making call outs Behind. I'm gonna pick behind. Pro tip number three, TTKs. TTK stands for time to kill. Or how much Pro tip number 3.2, break points and general DPS. Overall DPS, damage per second. Weapon damage calculation for break points and DPS. For your weapon and it will give you an idea of how to go about And that was the recap. Before moving on, I got a shout out to X. Well, that's what his name is on YouTube and Discord. He pointed out a flaw in my DPS calculator spreadsheet, so it was missing a key element there, which was the damage per magazine of the weapon. So we were taking the damage per bullet instead of the damage per magazine and then dividing or spreading it over the magdom time plus reload time. So thank you X and you guys can now go over to the spreadsheet and have a look at it or do your calculations. I'll leave the link down again in the description of this video. Alright, so let's jump into the topic and talk about Things to look out for versus specials and elites. So starting off with our number one, spitters and acid pools. <laughs> spitters are general threat to all the classes alike and it is highly suggested to rush them and prioritize them. As spitters and acid pools are very unforgiving on insane, a second or two will result in a down when standing on it. It is always better to rush the spitters without risking your safety and maybe burn a cooldown for them such as the overclock, etc. To quickly burst them down, however, if you don't have the luxury of pushing on the spitters, then it's highly recommended that you fall back even further and go into cover. Thus, it will force the spitters to come out of cover or relocate. Next up, we have Warriors and Praetorians. Warriors are slower compared to a Praetorian chasing you on all fours. However, they're slightly harder to deal with. They leap at you more consistently and almost never stop attacking you. Whereas Praetorians waste a lot of time posing in front of you. In fact, when a Praetorian leaps, jumps at you, you can literally sidestep it and walk past instead of diving and not taking any damage. Never get close to a Praetorian from behind, the tail swipe is nasty. In order to know how to dodge all types of enemies in the game, please refer to the link of the video in the description below. Crushers. Crushers do not have a weak spot and have a big ass shield of a head. Thus, whoever is being chased needs to take him into the opposite direction of your team. In fact, if he's not aggroed on you, you can stand still while it passes by you and you can shoot it in its back. So always when aggroed, get its back exposed facing your team or simply knock it down. Weapons with high base damage are the ideal choice to use against crushers as mentioned they don't have a weak point. Thus any CQW, especially shotguns, not the SMGs but shotguns and heavies tend to do really well against crushers. Moving on, bursters and prowlers. <laughs> they are your first priority if they're close to your team. If spitters are on the map, deal with the prowlers or bursters first. But be mindful of the spitters while doing that. A little bit. Just a little bit of strafing while keeping an eye out for the acid projectiles. One to two of the players in the team should focus on the prowlers and bursters if they spawn in a big number during big fights. Now, sometimes you'll face them in tight spaces or it'll be a sudden encounter. Remember, a single shot can down your ally instantly. A prowler cannot, at least not in a split second. So do not panic shoot or don't take a shot if you don't have a clear line of fire. And if you do and you're shooting it, stop. When you see a prowler on its hind legs, about to jump on your teammate, stop shooting, as it's only natural that he will try to dive out of the way. For bursters, if they're low enough, the killing shot would splash acid, and if it's aggroing your ally and is low, 
Don't go for the killing shot. You'll make your ally take acid damage. Let them finish it off instead. Now this brings us to our next topic. Your role during big fights and consumables. Managing roles during fights. Communicate so you all know what to do and don't end up doubling up resources or efforts, such as putting double cryos or two guys focusing the same lane and getting overrun from the other. Also, as a team, you need to make quick decisions such as 1. In presence of no fodder, but only the elite. The whole team can focus and burst it down quick. In case there are a bunch of runners around, then one of you, preferably the recon, should focus on them while the other two deal with the elite. As the recon can proc got your back for the team, which boosts damage tremendously. 3. Two of you need to focus on specials and runners if they're too many in number or else you're gonna get overrun. And one marine, preferably the one the elites aggroed on, he tries and stalls the elite. In case of classes on the team where two of you have CQWs and the third doesn't, the two classes with this CQWs and or pistols should preferably deal with the elite, whereas the third one without the CQW has to split damage for the time being and cover the two allies. Next up, consumables. Assessment drones. Having an assessment drone out in big fights sometimes changes the odds in your team's favor. It flat out straight up buffs your team damage by 25% for 90 seconds. Though you'd only need to pop it in big fights. Most of the time, just one person having three drones on them is more than enough. But be sure to use them. Alright, cryos and revive. Every team member must carry cryos. Not that you need nine of them, but what if you need them and you don't have them? Cryos are not just for cutting off horde from a lane for a couple of seconds, or just for elites. But it also comes in very clutch for any revive attempts when holding vanilla where it's chaotic or sudden oh shit situations. Keep in mind, stay away from cryos as an enemy aggroing you might leap at you if you're in range and jump over the cryo ignoring it, making it a complete waste. In big fights where you're holding a choke point where there are blind spots, corners, then put down cryos where you have a clear visual when the enemy gets stuck on it and that the stun doesn't get wasted due to poor cryo positioning which causes them to be stunned out of sight. Lastly, when you do those manly vanilla holds, it's advisable to drop an oh shit cryo or cryo at the fallback position already as a backup. Sometimes one of you is going to be unfortunate and might go down, do not panic. Any elites or closest threats can be dealt with. A. If you've got nothing, then a panic or emergency cryo works. You can immediately drop a cryo before attempting to revive. B. If there are just a handful of runners and you can quickly kill them, be it quick shots or a nade or a rocket, and then attempt to revive. If there's an elite or the queen on 5-1 for instance, and an ally is downed, you need to take a deep breath for a second and analyze the situation. Who's the queen on? Let's say she's on Charlie. Then Charlie shouldn't ever try to revive. He's gonna go down too. Instead, a Bravo should revive while Charlie distracts the queen and take her away. However, options A and B would still be applicable to Bravo while he's reviving. D. Before attempting a revive, the person who's downed can crawl back into cover of sorts, get out of an asset pool, for example, and then you initiate the revive. We've already talked about it and we will keep talking about it throughout this guide because this is very important. So positioning. If you're in a pre-made team with the means of communication, Discord, Xbox party, PSN party, always keep communicating with your team and telling them where you are. Like I'm on your right. I'm on your left, I'm in the middle of you too. Or I'm walking backwards while shooting. This makes a huge difference. Your teammates will be mindful of what's happening and you will be able to avoid friendly fire damage. That's how you avoid it. And with the example of the prowlers and bursters above, you start anticipating a dodge from your fellow marines. Stop shooting when you expect them to dive or dodge. Health range. Never stay at or below 750 HP as that's when there will be a high possibility that you may get executed if you were to be grappled. Let's quickly talk about weapons before diving into the main topic of this video, which are the classes and roles. 
Now that you have an understanding of breakpoints and have calculated your DPS and have an idea of TTKs, let's talk about weapon categories. Weapon categories. So when we talk about weapon categories, the highest burst and overall single target DPS weapon categories in the game are CQWs and pistols. We are talking about single target damage, not AOE. We will get to that later. Note. The X1 Fireball and the U1A2 GL conversion are indeed a CQW and a pistol, but they are AOE weapons and not single target, and they're not considered alongside the others while we talk about CQWs or pistols. So starting off with the pistols. The pistols, I gotta say, are the most fun to use in the game. They can be spec'd for either pest control or can be turned into the elite killing machines. With that being said, they are really dynamic. But unless you got a special case or no access to CQWs, do not spec into pistols for elites, as CQWs will always tend to do higher damage compared to pistols. Pistols come in all shapes and sizes. You've got pistols with wider spreads for close range to hard hitting sniper like pistols. My personal top tier and all time favorites would be the Mark 7, the Type 78 Burst, the Dambulla, and the M10. All of them with a pinch of fire rate and some seasoning for accuracy and reload from the perks and the attachments. They deal with the elites and the trash alike. The Kramer Magnum as well as the Frontier Revolver on the dock and the tech are very good for one-shotting Xenos or overall DPS versus Synths. Whereas the Kramer Short Barrel, the Rapid Responder and the Misha can be slapped on any class with access to pistols and they can take on hordes for days in close quarters. Close Quarter Weapons First off, CQWs. Shotguns are going to be your bread and butter when it comes to killing elites or specials, such as mother f spitters. Shotguns having the highest burst damage per mag will give you the confidence to get in an enemy's face and blow them up point blank. Using perks such as jackpot comes in very clutch in game modes for reloads due to huge special waves. And you can just keep on shooting and it's beyond satisfactory. Where shotguns offer the highest burst damage and ammo efficiency, they're only matched with their hostile. Um, long reloads. On the other hand versus higher HP targets, SMGs tend to do just fine, if not more. They do suffer from bad max ammo economy, however when it comes to elite specially, having highest HP bars in the game where multiple reloads are needed using shotguns or SMGs have the best TTKs. My personal favorite shotgun and SMGs would be the pump shotgun, the heirloom, the type 21 tactical and sometimes the auto shotty. SMGs would be the PPZ wall, the M39 sim machine gun. These tend to do amazing on the gunner and the tech. The SMGs above are really good secondary choices for the recon too. And all the long reload shotguns on the lancer. But warrior, I love my grenade launcher and my flamethrower. I like to burn the facehuggers when they're on my friends. Well, yes, these weapons got really big damage numbers in their stats, but they're not the high single target damaging weapons. Or they're not meant to be used on single targets. Well, speaking of heavy weapons, let's talk about heavies. The heavies are designed to delete tons and tons of bugs. Fry them, blow them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Their primary drawbacks would be the diminished single target potential. Also, when using AOE explosive heavies, it's usually very hard to hit weak points, and that's not the reason to use them at all. There's always the risk of blowing yourself up as well as your teammates along with Xenos of course. But once you master them, it's a high risk, yes, but very high reward. With that being said, there's nothing more satisfying than blowing up tens of Xenos with rockets and impact grenades all at once. These weapons keep you and your teammates from getting overwhelmed, especially in game modes. These are designed to kill the multiple enemies at the same time. My personal favorites here would be the M12 RPG launcher, where if you don't ADS, you can fire rockets twice as fast, and the grenade launcher being weak for long range shots on the ceiling, but excelling at everything else. I take them on the Lancer and Demo alike. Sometimes when I want to go with all single target damage, be it on the Lancer or in combination of the CQWs or rifles on the Demo, I'd go with the Smart Gun with down and out having the tanker muzzle on it as the Smart Gun almost negates all downtime on target selection and keeps the DPS going. Or the Heavy Pulse to hit harder alongside the minigun. However, I tend to go on the minigun with a lot of fire rate and stability and not CC and it performs much better in my opinion. And the heavy pulse is just love. Moving on to rifles. 
When we talk about rifles, there are assault rifles and DMRs slash sniper rifles. They are by far the hardest hitting weapons from range. They outclass any and every weapon when it comes to dealing damage at range in scenarios where you're fighting Sins or Xenos on long range maps, as some of them easily reach breakpoints or one-shotting Xenos with minimal investment, especially on a dog or a recon. We'll talk about it while discussing classes and roles. However, when it comes to medium or close quarter combat, they're not really good. Well, at least they'll struggle as you're going to be a bit tunnel visioned. But if you don't mind that, we've used them in tight corridors too. Some of them do not benefit a lot from fire rate or overclocks as it hurts their precision. Unless you're taking the Twilight, the DMR, not the shitty movie. The Twilight almost being the only one to truly benefit from fire rate or overclock. However, on all classes but the Gunner, I'd go with the Scout or the Ballista. They're the best DMRs in terms of balance and breakpoints, ammo economy and magazine sizes. Whereas the M42A3 sniper rifle would be better if you're more concerned about synths or specials rather than just runners. And then comes the Pike, which is a beast when it comes down to Milton synths. Alright, before we close out the video, let's talk about assault rifles. So assault rifles will never reach breakpoints. They aren't meant to. What they're good for is running and gunning. The only reasonable approach to them would be just bumping up their overall DPS, working on their weaknesses, i.e. reloads or fire rate. If it's low or weak point, in case it's already got a decent fire rate or reload, and how accurate and stable can you make them? To have better TDKs, of course. So I'd usually take the Kramer Assault, the Astra, or the Halberd. Use them when you're going to be fighting close quarters or medium range, and the OG Pulse Rifle or the Plasma Rifle if you're concerned about ammo economy on any and every class when choosing an AR. And finally, the way you should be swapping between your weapons is using your rifles for long to medium range, but switching to CQWs if and when there are a lot of runners close by or there are specials around when you want to go ham on an elite. Never, and I repeat never, use your rifle versus an elite with overclock on unless you're out of ammo or you're fighting since spitters and use overclock for that or you've got no cqw or pistols and you've got heavies and rifles such as the demo then going with the rifle for the weak point damage would be better in this case all right thank you so much for watching the video and this was the second installment in my ultimate guide for aliens fire team elite um you guys have been giving me so much respect and love and the, the response um the feedback is amazing and i'm really paying attention to it i'm taking it um to account while i was editing this video because the first video was a bit messy in terms of editing because like i had different plans when i started the, the idea of making this guide video um, and then later on changed, so it got a bit messy. I had to edit shit ton of things in that video. So with that being said, thank you so much again. Um, and this brings us to the end of the second part of the Aliens Fireteam Elite, um, the ultimate guide. So the third part would be the last one. Uh, we'll basically dive deep into the classes and roles. We'll break down each and every class in detail. I am so hyped. I'm more excited than you guys um, at the moment because I know it's going to be amazing. Um, with that being said, thank you so much from the depth of my heart and I'll see you guys around with the next video.